This is not gonna be one of my most exciting videos, but it will serve as maybe a good piece of information or a good referral video if you are maybe looking to buy one of these Porsche Cayennes. I've owned this car now for about a year or so, and I wanted to make a video on some of the top questions that I get about this car. Um, obviously, I've made a few videos, and off the back of those videos, we get a lot of comments basically asking, you know, what, what model they should go for, what are the, the pros, the cons, things like that. So we're gonna get into the top questions and answers for the Porsche Cayenne 958. Now the Porsche Cayenne 958 was built from 2011 to 2017 and between those years they made lots of different engines, different specs, lots of different options available for these cars. So before we get into it make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss a single thing. You can also follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. So the cost when new was from 57,000 to 123,000 and that obviously all depends on spec and options that the brand new owner of the car uh, optioned to the car when new. Now there are seven variants of this car. They are the Cayenne SE Hybrid, the Cayenne S, Cayenne GTS, Cayenne Turbo, Cayenne Turbo S, Cayenne Diesel and Cayenne S Diesel. The Cayenne was facelifted in 2014 with a range of minor external differences and they also added the e-hybrid. Now the external differences on the facelift model include a new front bumper, a new bonnet, new lights, all models now get by Xenon lights and the turbo comes with LED headlamps and all cars now have DRL. Now I guess this is open to interpretation but for me personally I would say that the competitors to the Cayenne or the BMW X5, the Range Rover Sport, the Mercedes GLE, the VW Touareg, Audi Q7, and Volvo XC90. Now the sport design kit on these cars is actually quite rare, and I think they look really, really good. So what's included with the sport design kit? Well, you get side skirts on the car, you will get the turbo wheels, you will get the corner splitters on the front corners, you'll also get corner splitters on the rear corners, you also get a more pronounced rear spoiler and you'll also get a rear splitter or rear valance running along the back of the car. Now everybody's preference is different here. Me personally though, I had to get a car which had the sport design kit. Yes, all of the diesel Cayenne models do come with a DPF system installed. This can be quite problematic though if you're only doing very short distances or short uh, drives, say for example, two or three miles at a time. That means the DPF system won't get a chance to get up to temperature and burn off the excess suit. So what I'd recommend if you are doing short trips is get one of these kits. I'll put the link in the description below. This will allow you to do a DPF regeneration on these cars and indeed the Macans and the Panameras as well. But it's very, um, so I'd certainly recommend it if you are looking to buy one of these cars, but you're not necessarily gonna be getting up to speed and doing long distance runs in these cars because the DPF system, it will clog up. Yes and no. This car is currently set up in the very lowest suspension setting. You cannot drive the car in that setting at all. You can, however, drive the car in the middle lower setting. So I think there's like five air suspension settings. You can drive it in the second lowest setting. Um, or alternatively, what you can do is use this kit here. Again, I'll put the link in the description below. This kit will allow you to calibrate the suspension or set the suspension up exactly as you see fit and exactly as you wish. So if you, I dare say if you wanted to drive the car in a suspension setting like that, you would be able to. But the only way you'll be able to do that is by calibrating it with this kit. I've tried and tested this kit on the suspension. It does work. So again, link in the description if you want to drive the Cayenne on air suspension at the very lowest setting. Honestly, this is something that I don't really do much of, but I did do some off-roading in this car on the very first day that I bought it. There are lots of, lots of suspension settings to play with, lots of, it, lots of assistance modes to play with, um, and I'll have to say I did actually quite enjoy it. Although I didn't go sort of, you know, mental when I was going off-roading, I did make use of the different terrain modes that were available, and it was quite fun. So I would say absolutely, yes, this can be a good off-road vehicle. Luckily, there aren't a great deal of common problems with this car, and in fact, I have made a video on this very subject. Again, I'll put the link to that video in the description below this video, but in a nutshell, the main problems with this key are the transfer case, the drain holes, the vario cam bolts, 
and some interior rattles and some creaks. But again, it's not mega money that you're gonna to have to fork out, uh, but there are a couple of things that you do need to be aware of. So check out that video. Well, this is a little bit harder to answer because everybody's situation is different. Everybody drives the car differently, but I have got a few notes here of my personal experience with this car. Remember, this is the three liter uh, V6 diesel. Uh, so if I'm on a motorway for a period of around about 15 minutes, I'm getting an average MPG of around about 45. Uh, on the smaller local roads where it's kind of stop start, I'm getting closer to 32 or 33 miles per gallon. Um, obviously, as I say, three litre turbo diesel, 245 brake horsepower. The best I've been able to achieve is 50 miles per gallon, but what I do need to point out as well is that I have a diesel chip tuning box in this, which is designed to give a little bit better performance, but also better fuel consumption. So 50 is the absolute best, but honestly, I'm driving like a granny. I'm driving at 50 miles an hour in eighth gear. So it's probably not really realistic in the real world. I would say probably more sort of low 40s, high 30s. This car has a really sizable boot in my opinion. With the rear seats in the upright position, you've got a total luggage space of 670 litres. If you wanted to fold the rear seats down, I think it's something like 1,728 litres. So you've got a real high amount of space there and I'm constantly filling this car to the brim and it's quite unbelievable the amount you can actually get into it. 100% yes. This is the most comfortable car I have ever owned and ever driven. The high seating position makes you feel authoritative on the road. The interior makes everything easy to use. There are three driving modes, which are comfort, standard and sport. And I personally always drive in the sport, which is the stiffest suspension setup. Uh, although it's better in the other two, but you still get a bit of roll and movement when on uneven and twisty roads. Uh, at the end of the day, it is a 4x4, it's not a sports car, so you're always going to get a bit of roll no matter what suspension setting you're in. Yes, the instrument cluster again is very easy to operate and very easy to understand and use. Uh, the configuration of the 95A cluster is actually one of my favourites, especially the changeable screen on the right hand side. This allows you to toggle through the trip computers, phones, sat nav, radio stations, very easy to use and basically means you can have your eyes ahead at all times while toggling through the different screens simply by using the, uh, the buttons on the steering wheel. Very good, very intuitive. Absolutely yes, anyone who follows this channel will know that I like to get my hands dirty and do things myself. Not so long ago I had to change an ABS sensor on this car, but it's very easy to do. You know, these cars are 70% VW, so even the ABS sensor that I bought for the car, it had a VW sticker on it. So um, it's very easy to change parts over, no harder than any other car like a Ford Focus or a BMW 3 Series. One thing again though, it goes back to this kit. This kit, if you get a, a warning on your dashboard, this kit will tell you where the fault is. So if you've got a fault in the engine system, the ABS, the PSM, airbags, transmission, you need to reset a service light. This is the tool I'd highly recommend going for. It will assist you every step of the way through changing the fault. Um, and I've used this countless times when diagnosing faults on this car. Not that I have had many, to be honest with you, but it's always just been there in the boot of my car, ready for, the, for me to use. So if you're reading up about these cars, you're probably gonna see a bit of bad press on the Tiptronic gearboxes. Honestly, if you're buying a Tiptronic gearbox in the Cayenne, don't worry about it, don't sweat it, it's absolutely fine. A lot of the criticism for the Tiptronic gearbox comes in owners who've had them in the Boxsters in the 911s. And yeah, I understand in a sports car, I've driven a Tiptronic, which has been in a 911 Carrera S. It's not great. It's never gonna get your heart going or set the world on fire. But with a Cayenne like this, you don't, you're, not, you're not looking for that experience. You're looking at these cars for your daily driver. You know, taking the kids to school, going shopping in it. You're not looking to get that sports car feel out of this car. So the, the Tiptronic in this car is 100% perfect. I love it in this car. I wouldn't have it in a 911, but it's fine for this. 
Now these cars don't have runners in place for you to go out and put a roof rack on straight away. So what you will need to do is you will need to buy some adapters along with the bars which go along the top of the car. In the summer, I had them fitted to this car. You'll probably see them on screen now. But what I'm gonna do is put a link in the description below to everything that you need if you wanted to go ahead and put the, uh, the, the rails and the adapters on this car. You do need to attach some adapters to the bodywork. It's not a problem though. When I took mine off, there were no scratches or anything like that. So uh, there are a few precautions you can take though, but yes, it ultimately, the answer is yes, you can put roof rails for a roof box on the car. For those of you who don't really like the PCM 3.1 system or whatever PCM is installed into your car, it might be 4.0, uh, you can fit CarPlay to this car. It's very easy to do. You can buy the PCM, or sorry, the, the CarPlay system for your Cayenne. It's a good system, it allows you to hook up your iPhone and uh, get your tunes on, get your sat nav on. It's a really good little system. Now I kind of touched on this earlier, but I was talking about driving in the lowered suspension system. These suspension systems, the air suspension systems, uh, they can be a little, a little bit tricky and sometimes if you need to replace parts, what you'll need to do is calibrate the whole system. Um, the, the lesser expensive tools like the POR version 2.0 Although it will read suspension faults, it's not gonna allow you to calibrate the system and adjust the ride height as you need to. So if you need to calibrate the suspension, you need to use this kit here, the MK808, link in the description. Yes, this car does have an electronic parking brake, so it's a little bit different when it comes to changing the brake pads of the car. What you need to do is use this kit to electronically open the calibers, which allow you to remove the brake pads. Then when you put new brake pads in, you'll need to electronically close the, the pistons in the caliper. Then you'll need to go through a bedding in procedure. Uh, it's like a grinding procedure. You'll need to calibrate the electronic park and brake, scan for faults on it, and then do a final setup to make sure everything is working as it should. Um, there are a few tests that it goes through automatically. So yes, it's not just as easy as just um, taking the calibers off, getting the, the piston back to get the pads out, put the new ones in. You do need to do it electronically via a diagnostic tool. And as I say, this will do it for you. So tuning boxes can be fitted to this car. A lot of people seem to be against them. I'm not exactly 100% sure why, but I've got one fitted to this car. It gives me a little bit of extra performance, gives me a little bit of extra MPG or fuel economy. Cost me, I think it was like 150 pounds and the fitting took about an hour. It's not hard to do, but you can put it in the hands of a specialist who will fit it for you there and then. Um, there are three different levels of the, the one that I've got is the race chip, uh, but there are three different levels ranging up to about 450 pounds. And the more you pay, I think the idea is the better fuel economy you get and the better performance. So it's really just a uh, sort of finding the right balance of exactly what you want to get out of that chip. So in a nutshell, I love the look of the car, the sports design, I love the way the car drives, I love the fuel economy that I get, I love the boot space, I love the comfort, the cockpit area. In fact, I've made a full video on this particular subject. Again, link in the description will take you to that video. Now, as an equilibrium enthusiast, I have also made a video on the things that I hate about this car. So rather than me populate this video with things that I hate about the car, because really I love the car. It's just there are, you know, no cars 100% great. So uh, a little video on that as well in the description. Would I recommend this car? 100% yes. It's a car that I love. It's my daily driver. I drive it every day. I drive it to work and back. I drive it to the shops, do the shopping. I drive it to the tip, take the kids to school. I can put huge payloads in the back. We've took it on holiday. We put a roof rack on, put a sports chip in. Uh, I've got all the tools I need should anything go wrong. It's very easy to replace parts, very easy to work on. Uh, it's been the most comfortable car that I've ever driven. It's been the most stylish car that I've ever driven. It gets lots, lots of looks. One of the downsides is though, when it's when it's dirty, it's dirty. You clean it and it's dirty instantly. So that's that's the one thing I don't like about the black. But other than that, I would say 100% yes. I'd recommend this car to anybody who was thinking about it. Obviously, you need to do your own homework. You need to test drive the other competitors. But for me, for the price you'll pay for the car, for the looks of the car, for the quality of car that you're gonna get, Cayenne wins hands down 
every time. And guys, thanks for sticking around. As I say, I'll put links to these kits in the description below the video. I'll also put links to other videos I've made about this car in the description below the video. Uh, really want to appreciate, appreciate you sticking around for this video and I hope you've learned something from it. Um, if you have, maybe hit that like button, click the subscribe button if you haven't already and also hit me up on Instagram and Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.